Hi and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today we are making a shirt waist and the pattern is from Black Snails Patterns in my new apartment because I moved between Christmas and New Year's. So a lot of things has been, has been going on. So I'm just looking forward to making stuff and sew this shirt. This shirt is with folds on the front with big puppy sleeves and a gathering at the back. So I'm going to start off with all of the assembly marks on the sleeves, making sure I get all of them, as always. Then I'm going to measure out where the gathering thread is going to be, and I'm going to put that in with small running stitches. And I'm going to make run one row and then another one. This is the first row. Here I'm starting on the second row. This helps keep uh, the gathering nice and smooth or nice and fluffy when you pull the thread when you're going to put in the sleeve. And if you have ever put in sleeve, sleeves, you know how tricky they can get. It's always a good thing to do some good prep work. Here they are all put in. I'm going to mark off center front and I'm going to iron that, fold that over, iron it and then fold it over again and then ironing it and putting it in, in some pins so it won't go anywhere. And I'm doing this on both front pieces as you can see here. This is where the buttons are going to be and the buttonholes. And now I'm finding where all the pleats are going to be, marking that off and start folding. And I do that trick where I put in a pin where the fold is going to be and then fold the fabric over so the pins meet. This is a lot easier for me when I make folds and gets it fairly precise. But it took some time. It was a bit tricky, but in the end I got there. The fabric I'm using for this shirt is uh, is some old bed sheets that I got at a Goodwill, I think it's called. Genbro. Here they are, all nice and folded. And I'm going to base that in with small running stitches to keep all the pleats in place when I am going to sew it all together. And to be honest, the pleats aren't that even, but again, it's handmade, it's not supposed to be perfect, so I think it's okay. Putting in basting stitches was a very good thing because it felt more secure when sewing it all together. I didn't feel like I was ruining all the pleats that I made because the basting stitches kept it all in place. This is at the top of the shirt waist. going to do the same at the bottom, as you can see here. And I'm showing, showing you all this prep work because that's the whole point of this shirt, is all the pleats. Because that's the big detail in the front, so that's why I'm showing you, showing you all these little basting stitches and folds and pleats and stuff. And I did the same at my waist, or where the waist goes, again to make sure I didn't ruin the pleats when I sewed it. 
and here you can see all the basting stitches are in and again you can see the pleats aren't all too even but it's okay I don't mind I think people will have to really look hard to see it uh, to see that they are not even and I did the same with the other side and here I'm giving it all a little press again to keep all the pleats in place all pressed nicely and here are the rest of the pieces here I'm giving them all a little stitch sewing them nicely together and here you can see the upper part of the back piece just giving that little press as well and here's a little trick when you have rounded edges these are for, for my cuffs I just snip the roundness and then I press that as good as I can on my little sleeve press here it's not ideal but it works and this is what makes the sleeve edges crisp and nice it makes it a lot easier to turn and I'm just going to snip the seam allowance before I turn it so it won't be too bulky where, it, where they round in or, uh, in the edges I don't know what to call those where the roundness is <laughs> on the cuffs and here I'm going to give a little press and then they're almost done and here I'm going to snip the corners off and snip in uh, on the collar piece again to make it easier to uh, to to turn and to f uh, get the edges or the all the corners out so they look nice so they won't be rounded but actually pointy and again I'm using my little sleeve press because that's what I have and it kind of works giving all the seam allowance a little press before I turn it and again this helps to making all the it's just nice and crisp now it's all turned I use the points or the edge end of my scissors to get the rest of the corners out to make them all nice and aligned or pointy if you will and here the pieces are all done and I'm just going to press the rest of the shirt before assembling it all so here it is, all pressed nicely and now I need to put in some sleeves put on the collar bit and put on the cuffs on the big sleeves and before I do that I'm going to mark off where the cuff is going to be and where the slit on the, uh, on the sleeve is going to be I think I made a mistake here at some point because there was going to be a little fold as well but my cuffs were so big that there wasn't any fold so yeah I made a mistake there somewhere but it turned out okay all prepared to be assembled putting on the cuffs
putting in the color. Checking there are no lobs before I sew it on. And again, giving it all, it all a little press. This is the cups. This is the color. So far, so good. And I made some extra stitches on the top bit just to give it some detail keeping all the seam allowance in place. Did the same on the cups. And now it's sleeve time. And I ended up doing this over two days because my brain wasn't really working the first day. So some days you just have to acknowledge that <laughs> that is not putting in sleeve day. And here I'm trying to get all the pleats to sit nicely with a lot of pins before I sew it on. This can take a bit of time and it's a bit tricky, but you just have to trust the process. Here they are sold in. And here you can see all the pleats. They sit all nicely. There are no lumps and bumps anywhere. Always a good idea to check. And here it is, all assembled. So I'm thinking I'm going to make little stitches on the edge of the pleats, just to keep them in place. So about a bit about down here. I don't know if I'm going to put in at the waist. Spoiler, I ended up not doing that, but I was thinking about it. And then I'm going to put in a little gathering thing at the back as well which I think I made wrong as well, but I can always <laughs> always try to make it right at some point. And these are the buttons that are going to go in. So yeah, button time. And gathering thingy time. Just measuring out how far down I'm going to make the stitches on the front to keep all the pleats in place. Sewing those nice and slowly, all the way to the edge. Taking out all my basting stitches. This is always fun, because that means you're almost done. And here I'm finding out where the whole gathering thingy is going to be. That is going to be this channel that you sew and then you have a buttonhole in each end and then you put a, a, th a string or something through and then you gather it. But I think I should have done this on the inside of the shirt instead of on the outside. So it all would have had turned in, but you can see that later what I mean. Some buttonholes and of course I ended up destroying one buttonhole so it ended up being like two and three centimeters longer because brain farts. Here I'm marking off where my buttons are going to go in. Putting in some lovely white buttons. These buttons are from Goodwill as well, so this whole shirt didn't cost me a lot. Here I'm going to pin that uh, gathering tunnel, I don't know what you call this. And after sewing it, I trimmed some of the excess fabric away just so it wouldn't be too bulky. This is on the inside 
and the buttonholes on the outside as you can see here. I should have made those on the inside as well. I think because when you gather it or when you you know make a knot and you gather it, it just does I don't think it looks nice, to be honest. I think if it would be better if I would gather it like this and then make a knot on it but on the inside so this would be on the outside instead of the the string but I can always make some other buttonholes so it's not the end of the world and here it is on it's not too bad looking I love the sleeves I think this gathering thread thing or string thing is just I don't know it just looks wrong gives me a little duck tail And for me, with all these pleats, it reminds me too much of a 50s housewife's pregnancy shirt. So I don't really know if I'm ever going to use it. But if I am, then it's probably going to be with a vest over, as you can see here. And then the gathering th thing in the back make makes more sense. But yeah, shirt done! First sewing project in my new apartment. And if you're still watching, thank you, you're awesome. And I just wanted to say that I'm going to be posting videos at the end of the month. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!